Hey, what's up, guys? This is Adam with TAT Express. I'm sorry I'm running a little behind. Uh, it is 2.03 now. Um, we're going to be talking about dealer repairs today. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sorry for being a little behind. Uh, we were in the shop shooting some new content to you guys. Very excited about getting this new content out to you guys. We, are, we sh just shot uh, how to replace a wheel seal, how to do a wheel seal on an 18-wheeler. Um, and the, actually it's very hot in the shop. So, you know, I just got done shooting that, uh, that should be released this week. Uh, so I've got a lot of comments on, um, on getting that, on getting that done. A lot of comments, a lot of people asking me how to do that. Okay, guys. So we're going to get right into this. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, dealer repairs. Okay. Now I'm going to be talking about stuff that we see here at this location. So guys, uh, I, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, this is not going to be covering every dealer out there. Okay, so keep in mind, this is just going to be what we be seeing, we, we see in our shop. Now, I get a lot of guys that come into our shop. Uh, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining us, chat. Uh, chat is live today. I see all you guys. Uh, 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 son, I see you out there. I'm glad you made it in. I'm glad you're tuning in. What's up? Uh, what's up, Trey? AT, how you doing, guys? Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear you. I'm glad you can hear me. What's up, uh, e extra? How you guys doing? Uh, sorry for being a little late, guys. Like as I, as I mentioned, we just shot a video on how to do a wheel seal. So um, we're very excited about releasing that video. I'm gonna wait for a couple of guys to get uh, get on. Uh, we're gonna be talking about dealer repairs today, as I mentioned. Okay. Now I get a lot of guys that come in with with uh, with experiences that they had at the shop at a dealer. Uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you it's not cheap and it's not it's not a good experience most of the time that uh, they come in here uh, They're 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 telling me about what they spent at the shop uh, You know and it and it's high, you know any repairs on these trucks is not going to be cheap so uh, Getting these done at a dealer is not going to be your best bet all the time uh, Basically what I see is they don't have the capacity to take on all the work that they uh, that they're actually actually built for, you know, they're built with uh, a, a bunch of bays, you know, probably 20 plus bays, uh, and they don't have enough technicians in place to be able to troubleshoot every single truck correctly. So what they're ha what I see happening is they're not troubleshooting it correctly. They're having customers change out large components, very expensive components. Uh, for example, I had a customer that uh, had his one box replaced. Uh, he had his one box replaced, which is a very expensive repair. We're talking over six to seven thousand dollars to to replace a one box on a DD15, and the dealer had him replace his one box. And it wasn't a week or two later, his code came back. And the code that he was having was on a video that I did about uh, low NOx conversion efficiency. Now that's a very common fault. That's a very common fault that happens. Uh, you know, that's that fault's gonna happen when you're pulling heels. If you have a DD15, if you're pulling heels, you're trying to make power, uh, you're gonna get the low NOx conversion efficiency. It's a very tricky code to uh, to troubleshoot, you know. To uh, so understanding the system is where I kind of see where the dealers are lacking. Their, their, their mechanics, you know, I'm getting comments, guys. If you have comments about your experiences with the dealer, please share us, share what, uh, share, uh, you know, your experience with us. I'll be more than happy uh, to hear about it. Uh, but I, the list goes on. The list goes on and on about the repairs that get done at dealerships, uh, the expensive repairs that get done at dealerships. And it's not long before they start having the same problem again. I have a customer that's out of uh, out of uh, San Antonio. He's a viewer. He's a viewer of mine. Uh, he's probably watching now. Thanks for joining us, everybody. If you guys haven't uh, liked the uh, like that, hit that like button. Make sure to hit that like button. I only got two likes so far. Make sure to share this video, guys. If you want to give any information out to anybody that may be finding this useful. Uh, so back to the repairs, as I see all the time, you know, the customers are coming in. Like for example, this one box that got replaced. And the one box getting replaced is a common procedure that I see the dealers do. And I feel like they just don't want to go through the troubleshooting steps or understand the troubleshooting steps to really kind of pinpoint what's going on with the truck. Um, you know, so just swapping a, swapping a one box, you know, there's, there's a lot of procedures in place before you before you change a one box you can't just 
uh, uh, change a one box because you have low NOx conversion efficiency. That's not that's not a reason to to change your one box. If if you are having issues with your one box with low NOx conversion efficiency, I have a video that I've made, and this video has been out for a little bit, guys. If you haven't checked it out, I'm gonna put a link. Uh, I'm gonna put a link onto this this video here on um, that particular video, and that video just basically explains the troubleshooting procedures that we take. Uh, uh, and, and, and not just for DD-15s, you can take a look at uh, the D-13 video that I did uh, that I just released about DPF inspection and service. You know, that, that's a pretty, it's a sit down video, but it talks about the steps that we take to troubleshoot items uh, because after treatment systems are tricky. After treatment systems can be very tricky. So if you don't understand them and you haven't been around the block, you know, we've been in business for a long time. We've been in business before after treatment systems even came out. So we got the, you know, we, we got the, the luxury of dealing with after treatment systems since they just got released. So being able to deal with these after treatment systems for such a long time, we, we've seen so many different faults coming in. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've released I've, I try to get out as much content as possible to you guys to kind of better uh, help you guys, uh, you know, make a better decision on your repairs. I know it's tough, guys. I get a lot of calls throughout the week about, you know, you guys are in other shops and and you're questioning their their ability. And, and, it, and it's and it's a tough position. I understand. And I want to help you guys. But at the same time, it's tough. If I don't have the truck in my shop, you know, and, and they're not running the test that they need to be running, then they're not going to be able to find a problem. So and, and, and you think going to a dealer, hey, you know what? These dealers are going to be able to do it right because they're pretty much uh, should be trained on this. But as I mentioned, they're over capacity when it comes to work. Um, you know, the way that they're built out, they're built out just so ginormous that they don't have enough technicians to cover every truck coming in. Uh, they got warranty coming in from uh, from the dealers or from the manufacturers, and uh, some of that work is is being uh, is being set as priority uh, because you have a lot of new fleets that have a lot of these new trucks that are having issues. Another issue I want to talk about is I had another customer call me and they sent me some photos and everything. They saw my channel and I really appreciate them reaching out to me. Uh, and they had an issue with the truck um, just kind of losing uh, losing power. It was a D13 Volvo with an automatic transmission. It was It's going uphill. Uh, it was losing power. But one thing that she mentioned to me is that the, the, the fault was intermitting. Okay, when you have an intermitting fault, that means it's coming and going. So sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So when I ask the questions and I talk to the drivers, if you guys are technicians and you're watching this, this is why it's very important to get uh, as much information as possible from the driver about what's been done and what they're experiencing. Uh, so this is this is all very important information that you need to soak up like a sponge and use this information to help guide you to be able to find out what's going on with the problem. So, uh, you know, guys, you know, this it's tough. I know it is. I'm going to try to catch up with chat here, guys. It's, it's pretty live right now. Uh, AT, how you doing? Thanks for, for thanks for hollering at us. What's up, Trey? Trey's been working in the shop with me today. We just shot a video on how to do a wheel seal. So, guys, uh, if, you, if you've been waiting on that video, I've, I've kind of looked around on YouTube and kind of saw what type of uh, – what type of uh, videos are out there for wheel seals and there's not really good content out there so i'm hoping that you're going to enjoy this video that we're going to be releasing later this week about how to do a wheel seal um so uh tune in guys i'm glad you guys are are, are i'm glad i'm happy for all the support guys i really appreciate all the support uh hello transport thanks for joining us uh very a uh, very uh, co uh, committed viewer there. I like to see you there often, and I, I know you're helping out with the channel uh, on some questions that we don't get to, so I appreciate that, Transport. I hope everything is fine. I know you were out there uh, running dispatch, and uh, you were more interested in the office, or I'm sorry, more interested in the shop. So, uh, you know, at this point, with this with this heat, uh, sometimes the shop is, uh, is is a little is a little heated in there. So uh, let's move right along. Uh, yeah, the flat rate, There, a lot of shops run off flat rate. Uh, you know, basically it's just, you know, ways that they're able to, uh, get the, get the technicians more motivated, uh, more on a commission base. So trying to get work turned around is, is something that's important to them as well. It's important to everybody, but you know, at how we operate at my shop, uh, you know, if I have a technician that, you know, basically we have, 
a technician that, for example, comes in or a, sh a truck that comes in with a check engine light, you know, this technician is, is going to submit this fault, these list of fault codes to uh, not only myself, to the shop manager, to the lead. So we're all looking at the code. We're all seeing what's going on with the truck. Uh, you know, we all we are brainstorming together to figure out what's going on with the truck. And we don't always step in. You know, a lot of times our technicians are able to find the problems pretty smoothly. But we do this to keep the quality control in place because that's one thing that a dealer is failing to do is to keep the quality in place. Uh, you can turn trucks around all day. You can do 40 trucks a week. But if you're not if you're not having any kind of quality control in place, then you can have comebacks very easily. You can have false uh, or incorrect uh, readings, uh, incorrect troubleshooting. Uh, so, you know, I, I get a lot of guys that come in the shop and I appreciate the support and I appreciate your guys' patience. But we do need time to work on this to figure out what's going on with it. This is why we charge to check, you know, check your truck out thoroughly because, yeah, it might seem like that cost up front is like, wow, why are they charging us to check it out? But the guys that, for example, I had a customer come in this past week. Um, you know, we charge for a diagnostic fee uh, to check it out. To ho just hook up the computers is a charge, uh, but to troubleshoot is a different charge. You know, that's told two different jobs there. Just a code reader is somebody like uh, you're going to see at a truck stop. This is something that he mentioned. He said, hey, you know what? I can go to the truck stop, uh, you know, the TA, Flying J, whatever it is, Bosch, whatever they are. Uh, and get my code read and I'm like, okay, so getting a code read is not going to help you out because basically those code readers are going to, what they're going to do is, is they're going to say, Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, X conversion efficiency low, you need to replace your NOX sensors. So you replace your NOX sensors. They didn't test the DEF system to see if your delivery is correct. Or if you have any leaks or any air leaks or your, your supply is low. They don't check for that. So if they don't check for that and you're replacing your, your NOX sensor and they reset everything, of course it's going to work and the check engine light is going to go away right then and there. But once you're actually under a load and you're putting that truck into operation, that's when you're going to see the faults come back. And it's it's very frustrating. I understand. I understand everybody's frustration out there. So, guys, you know, uh, if you're out of state, uh, you know, we're in Dallas if you guys are out of state and we're, we're kind of far from you, uh, we get guys come in. I mean, I had guys come in from PA last week, uh, Pennsylvania. Guys, guys come from Florida, Georgia. I had a guy drove all the way from El Paso with a check engine light. Uh, he's already had that truck uh, repaired at multiple locations. Uh, and they told him they got it fixed. They say, hey, you know what? It was your intake sensor. And uh, uh, Martin, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. He was, a, he was just watching last week on our live. Uh, and he was having a check engine light and uh, he had it repaired by a shop uh, very quickly. The check engine light came back with the same exact code. I would understand if it's a different code, but if it's the same exact code, uh, that's an issue. So the code came back. You know, he reached out to me on the live last week. Uh, he was messaging me on Facebook uh, and, and YouTube. So uh, he was able to come in. He came in Monday. Thankfully, he made it in and uh everything was good we hooked up the computer we find out what was going on he had it of course an intake sensor fault that intake sensor fault uh i brought it back to him i said hey you know what this is what you're having you're having this intake sensor fault uh he's like well wait a minute they've already replaced that sensor and of course we have dealer software so we're able to pinpoint exactly what sensor locations are what's faulting out we know how to test the circuit uh we know how to read the code uh, a code is going to tell you exactly what's going on it's going to tell you an open circuit shorted to ground uh very descriptive on the, on the codes so when you're very when you get very descriptive on the codes you're, you're better you're, your chances of finding out what's going on is, is your, your chances are higher so he had he had an intake sensor fault uh, guys i'm sorry about the lighting it's kind of acting up we've kind of running behind uh we're shooting in the shop so uh so anyway i told him it was the intake sensor it took us about a half an hour and uh we were able to get it working for him we got it fixed for him he was very satisfied he left us a good review on google guys so you can check that review out even a guy from pa the PA, the guy from PA came in for a vow adjustment. He saw us online, came in for a vow adjustment. We're very happy to satisfy or ha very happy to service him, guys. So it may be a little bit of a drive if you guys are out of state. But if you have this maintenance coming up, 
uh, you're going to spend this money uh, either way, whether it's going to be with a dealer or, or, or one of these cheaper shops. But at the same time, you don't know 100 percent if this truck's going to be checked out correctly. You know what I see about another issue that I see with dealers is the morale. There's no morale. The morale is crap. You know, there's nobody uh, building these guys up to keep these guys moving. It's pretty much just a job to them. They come in, they clock in. They don't care about nobody's truck. Uh, you know, and, and this is some of some of the guys. I'm not going to most of the guys, I should say, are like this. I've been in dealer environments. I've worked in dealer environments. I've worked in truck stop environments. So I understand how they act and I understand the morale. The morale is super down. Uh, they're, they're, they don't take any pride in their, in their work. Uh, they're basically just there to, to collect uh, hours and that's it. So uh, you want to be very careful with those type of dealerships and truck stops. Those are the type of guys that don't have a lot of morale. They don't take uh, they don't take really pride in their work. You know, here at here at TAT, you know, we, we, we strive for excellence. You know, our 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 mo our motto, you know, our our, our our company, our company slogan is professionals built on integrity who strive for excellence. And I remind my guys about this every week. You know, we we're we're, we're professionals, of course, and, and we, we strive for excellence. And, and of course, integrity is, is something you guys can see online. You know, this is what I perceive online. This is what I, I, I let you guys know everything about your truck i'll let you guys know because we've been through this before we've been through this so many times so this is why i'm able to tell you with an honest face what's going on with your truck uh yeah it may take us a little time to figure it out but the reason why it's taking us more time is because we want to throw it through our process so that we can get all this corrected the first time and not have to come back um, so guys, I really appreciate you joining me, man. You got 25 views right viewers right now. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to, to, uh, to share. I just shared a link on the, on the video that I was just talking about. It is code 43, uh, 436418, uh, uh, NOX conversion efficiency low, very common code guys. If you have this code and you're at a dealer, you're at another shop and they're telling you to replace your NOX sensors just get your keys and get out of there okay that's not going to be the problem the only time an nox is going to be bad an nox sensor is going to be bad is if it's drifting if it's drifting during a region if it's drifting during a low temp region or you're having an internal circuit fault and that's basically going to be on a cummins a volvo or or a detroit it's going to say it's got an internal fault in in the in the nox if it's saying nox conversion efficiency low you need to check the system out check that video out you know and also check out the other video that i just released about uh dpf service that's a very important uh those are very important steps that i see that are not being followed and and that's how you're going to get false diagnostic and well in the dealership uh so guys keep it keep all this in mind um so i'm going to catch up on the comments here gs their mechanics their mechanics only get paid when they work it's rigged okay you're right and as i mentioned their guys are there just to get just to get a clock you know they don't do digital inspections uh we do digital inspections on all vehicles if you come in for an oil change if you come in for a tire replacement we're doing a digital inspection we're advising you what needs to be done at the mileage you're at we talk to you about what has been done what hasn't been done because we don't want to redo any kind of rework that's been done already if you had your if you had your filters clean already you make sure they're getting clean at a right location. Make sure they're getting clean by somebody that knows what they're doing. I see filters come in here all the time. Customers tell me that they've got them clean. The clamps are leaking. The gaskets are leaking. When, you're, when your DPF filter is leaking like that, uh, as I mentioned to you before, you have issues with pressures not reading correctly. The sensors are reading off of temperatures, pressures. They're all going, you know, they're all having issues with, uh, I'm not issues, but they're all having, uh, they're depending on these readings. So if these readings are incorrect because of soot level buildup on the sensor, uh, uh, exhaust leaks, uh, issue, components not working correctly is going to throw that technician all over the place. And you're going to get a bad, a bad uh, diagnostic and you're going to end up paying all this money and not getting anything fixed. So uh hello transport i don't know what is that a burrito i appreciate that burrito that looks good we haven't ate lunch yet um we we've been shooting uh, all day uh we're gonna head out to the site here after this live we're gonna give you uh some new uh, updates on the site 
Uh, they're coming along very, very, uh, very quickly, man. I mean, there's a lot of work going on to the in those in the new site, guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're building a new shop. Yeah, we're gonna be actually right behind a dealer. Uh, so I mean, it's gonna be convenient because that area is already kind of built up. It's got really good truck access, so you're gonna be able to find us. The concrete is really built out. Uh, so you got a really strong concrete in that area. It's really built for the trucking industry. It's all warehouses in that area, Niagara bottle, discount tire. There's going to be, there's just uh, L'Oreal. There's just a lot of warehouses, Amazon distribution centers. So we're going to be right in the mix of all that. So some of you guys may be delivering to that area. So when we get moved out there, hopefully you guys can come pay us a visit. So, uh, transport, I appreciate that burrito. Uh, okay. Let me see. They just want to collect their money. Yes. You're correct. Understaffed and sadly undertrained guys. You're right. You know, son, uh, son, uh, this is a, a, another comment from chat. I'm trying to catch up to you guys, but chat, you're right. They are understaffed. Uh, and with the morale that they're having at those locations, it's hard to keep staff. You know, they get there, they don't have morale, you know, they don't have any drive in, in what they want to do, and, and they're, they don't have any kind of professional, they don't hold any professionalism in what they do. So, you know, you're not you're not going to get what you pay for. If you're going to pay top dollar, you need to get top dollar service. OK, so guys, just keep that in mind. So I appreciate that comment, son. If you got any more else, to, anything else to share, our, uh, please share it with you guys. Chat, I appreciate all the comments here. I'm going to go ahead and keep on moving on here. GS says they put a sign saying 170, 170 an hour at my local Freightliner. OK, yeah, that that makes sense. 170 an hour. Uh, you know, if you if you don't have any choice to go to their GS, make sure what they are telling you is correct. You know, there's got to be details in the invoice. You know, if, if you're not being, uh, you know, communicating with the service writer or the manager or anybody on the service floor, if they're not giving you enough communication and that information needs to be put in the in the ticket itself, if they're just telling you, hey, you know what, we need to replace this and they don't have a reason why. A, a, a thorough reason why they don't have uh you know any test results showing that the component failed multiple times that would be a, a little bit suspicious to me so keep that in mind yeah 170 is is, is around where where uh, the truck rates are and you got to keep in mind there are going to be some shops that are going to be 80 dollars 70 dollars an hour but be honest i mean you're going to get what you paid for you're going to get uh guys that may not know exactly uh what's going on with the system you know they may get lucky and, and and find something easy but if you're having after treatment problems and it's continuously happening then i would suggest try to make your way here or get to a shop that knows what they're doing you know this is why i like to share as much content as i can to you guys so that you guys can understand what amount of work goes into working on these trucks and understanding what's going on with the after treatment system so I appreciate that comment, GS. Uh, Trey's asking me, how's the new shop coming along? As I mentioned, we're going to go uh, to the site today, shoot some more media, uh, shoot some more content at the site. We have some aerial shots that we had shared during the weekday. Uh, we got some more aerial shots of uh, how the progress is going. So we're going to be adding more to that content today. Uh, so hopefully you'll see something later on this week. As I mentioned, we just shot how to replace a, a oil seal on your 18 wheeler. So guys, if you need, if you've been looking for that, that's going to be coming out. Uh, Javier, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us, Javier. I appreciate you uh, joining uh, joining the chat. Um, uh what what's good adam hey how you doing i like the flex got the flex on get the flex on i appreciate that son right now dealers are restaffing with younger cheaper help and sadly under trained the higher paid techs are being replaced that leads to repeat failures for the same issues for them and it's about profit you know the staffing staffing is 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 an issue and under track under training is under stat under under trained staff is what is, is what's going on there as well and the morale at the shop you know i don't want to attack them i don't like to attack the shops you know i'm not trying to make enemies out here i'm just letting you guys know what we see here we see and the calls that i get is endless guys i got a call list here of what ha what is happening out there and it's crazy it's crazy okay i got a guy here and this is a guy that had a uh, coolant buildup going into his engine, okay? Now, this is an ISX Cummins. It looks like an ISX 15 is what I notated here. Um, 
So this guy was being very, very nice, very nice guy. He's like, hey, you know what? I took it to the dealer. The dealer told me that my uh, that that my head was bad, that I needed to go ahead and rebuild my engine because of the mileage and then what I was building into the cooling system. I rebuilt my engine 17 uh, plus thousand dollars later. I still have pressure in my cooling system. I was just dumbfounded by that comment. You know, I was like, why did they do a combustion test? Uh, you know, combustion gas test. I don't know. Uh, you know, these are these are stuff that needs to get done. You know, if you're going to be tearing into an engine, you're going to first of all, you don't want to take an engine apart if you don't have to. You don't want to do more work than you need to. Uh, if you need to, that's understandable. But if you're not testing the components and all you want to do is pull the engine apart because you suspect something that's an issue. If you suspect an error with with whatever component that's suspected, that component needs to be tested. You can test it with the with the with the truck and the engine still together. You can test it with computers. You can test it with diagnostic equipment. If they're not doing these tests, then of course you're going to get bad diagnostics, and this is what happens. You get you end up spending all this money, all this time with the dealer, and then then what do you do when you go back? They they tell you it's something else, and they want to charge you something else. So it's very frustrating, guys. I see it, I hear it. Uh, you know that's just another example there. Uh, hey, back to chat, Julio. I appreciate that thumbs up. Thanks for joining us, guys. If you haven't uh, hit that like button, make sure to hit that like button. I'm up to 16 likes now. I appreciate that, guys. Um, trying to catch up to your comments here. Uh, we got chat is on fire today, so I appreciate you guys joining us. Age uh, Space Age says I have a uh, Fitzgerald glider, and the engine is a '94 Detroit 60 series. That was 11 1 converted into a 12 7. Um, am I familiar with the process? Okay, so if it's the same block, all you're going to be doing is replacing the internals and crank. Uh, so if it's 11 1, uh, if the same block, um, if you may have to go with a different head, uh, but changing out the crank and, and the internals will make it into a 12 7. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty stout truck. That's pre emission. So you're probably not dealing with too much that we're talking about here. When it comes to uh, when it comes to the the, the issues uh, that you know, I mean, going back to the ISX Cummins 15 that got rebuilt because of uh, coolant pressure, uh, you know, and and after the rebuild, there was still coolant pressure in place. You know, that's issues right there that you know that you got to be careful with if you have that 12.7 that's you know making. Uh, uh, excessive pressure in the cooling system it's not all the time it's going to be combustion gases we have seen compressors fail uh, that's why it's very important to cancel in, uh, cancel out in, cancel out uh, suspected items or suspected components and make sure you're doing thorough test you know testing for combustion gases as I mentioned before if you have pressure going into your cooling system if you're not testing for combustion gases and if you have if you are in a shop if you're in an area where somebody's suggesting you replace the head uh, or you rebuild the engine but you have combustion gases and you ask them or because you have pressure in your cooling system and you ask them hey I appreciate that Trey if you ask them hey you know what did you do a combustion gas test is is that really combustion gas going into the going into the cooling system and if they don't have an answer for you and they tell you hey you know what we didn't we didn't do that combustion gas test I wouldn't I wouldn't get my truck service there honestly I would just get my keys and get out of there Excuse me, guys. Um, we've been shooting, as I mentioned, in the hot shop. We're here in Dallas, Texas, so the temperature is pretty hot. I know you guys are feeling this heat. It's pretty hot all over the place. So I uh, hope you guys are staying cool out there, guys. If you have any issues with your AC, make sure you're getting your cab filter replaced. I see a lot of cab filters that are getting clogged up right now. If your cab filter is not being in service on a regular basis, that's not going to let airflow go through that evaporator, and that's going to cause you to have air conditioning issues. Also, uh, if you have, if you don't have any grill guards that's guarding your your condenser, make sure your condenser is being protect, protected by road debris, because anything could hit that condenser and cause that to to uh, to leak on you. Um, we got a comment here from chat. Patience is key to success. You know, I'll patient. You're right. That is that's that's a really that's a really good comment, and and, and it's nothing nothing more true than that comment that you just made. Patience is not easy. Patience is something that a lot of people need to work on. I myself need. I I I feel like I'm pretty patient when it comes to mechanics. 
Uh, but, you know, there's other items that, it, you know, everybody needs work with patience. So I appreciate that comment. Uh, Juan, what's up, Tad? Good video going going right now. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We got some more content coming your way, too. We got some aerial shots of the new site coming. Uh, we can't wait to get the new shop up because we're going to be able to shoot more videos during the daytime. So I'm probably going to be looking at releasing maybe two to three videos a week when we get to the next shop. So we're really excited about that. Javier says, not dealer, stealers. And you know what? With the experience that I'm seeing that customers are experiencing, I can I can see why you want you make that comment because not only that they're not servicing you guys correctly, but they're trying to sell you junk trucks. They're they're spraying, you know, I get trucks here all the time. Uh that from the dealer that all they do is spray spray paint all everything. They, you know, they they ignore all the maintenance intervals, you know, the suspension intervals, everything. And what do they do? They paint over everything and they sell these trucks to uh, buyers that are not too experienced with what they're buying so they buy themselves into a headache uh, an expensive headache so I, I understand why you make that comment Javier I appreciate that uh, I appreciate that chat son's got another comment here correct Adam dealer mechanics morale is in the dirt very very much so very much so I try my best to keep on my our morale up here at the shop I'm very selective on who I bring into our shop because I feel like morale is a very big, big uh, issue uh, when it comes to running the location because without 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 morale, man, without somebody that's going to take professional, take pride in their work and be a professional at what they do, you're going to have people swapping parts. You're going to have comebacks. You're going to have upset customers. It's just going to be a headache. And this is what the dealers are dealing with. They can't keep people in staff. You go to a parts house, everybody has a, a really bad attitude. You know, they don't want to service anybody. You know, they act like you're you're dealing with, uh, you know, you act like they act like you're bothering them, you know, when when you're the reason why they have a job. So it's very tough to deal with those type of people. I understand that. Uh, Trey says, Tad is going to offer hats and shirts once the channel hits 10,000 subscribers. Let's Yeah, okay, so I've had comments about where my merch is. Now, we want to get our merch up, but we have to be at 10,000 subscribers, as Trey mentioned. So we're working on getting more content you, to you guys so we can get our subscriber base of. Guys, I need your help. If you know anybody that can use this channel or can find this channel useful, share my channel with them. You know, uh, Let them know, hey, you know what? This guy, I can help you guys out. We got a wheel seal uh, replacement coming out. We got, uh, I got another delete, a bad delete that happened in the shop. It didn't happen in my shop. We didn't do any, we don't do any deletes, but it was a longtime customer of mine. Okay, uh, I guess he decided to get the truck deleted uh, and he had a major failure. It's about as bad as the last video that I released about the delete. So we, we're hoping to shoot that today so we can get that released to you guys as well. There's just so much content that we have that we're not able to get shot because during a weekday, all we're doing is focusing on getting you guys in and out, service correctly, keeping the quality up, and get you back on the road. So keep that, keep all this in mind. Javier, hey, Tad, what do you think about us cleaning our own DPF filters? Now, I have seen some guys clean some filters uh, with water. Uh, you know, I have seen some different, you know, if... Honestly, if you're only going to clean this filter every 300,000 miles, I would suggest uh, making sure you're getting it bacon blown, making sure that you're getting it pressure uh, flow tested. If you're going to clean your own filter, but you're not going to be able to flow test it, that's going to be an issue there because how are you going to know you're going to get that cleaned out like you need to? Uh, it needs to be flow tested. Uh, and what I mean by that is they put it on a, uh, on a system that has uh, a vacuum on it and they, they test how much airflow is going through the filter and each filter is specced out so if you have a filter that's out of spec if you're not inspecting that filter thoroughly you put that back on uh, you can have uh, some check engine lights come back so make sure that and also your DOC needs to be cleaned as well a lot of guys are ignoring DOCs DOCs are what the first filter that's getting clean besides the I mean the first filter that's experiencing the, the soot buildup but and then after that is the DPF filter so 
get not getting not getting your doc clean is 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 gonna be could cause some problems especially if you're doing high idles so keep that all in mind hey tat i just had a mechanic correct uh i just had a, a mechanic connect the computer to check the low nox conversion code he didn't even run the low regen test as you recommended to check the sensors drifting he checked the dpf filter you see that's that's a great example i'm, I'm glad that you made this comment i'm glad that you that this comment's coming in on chat because it just goes exactly what I'm talking about, okay? He doesn't do the low, okay, you have a low NOx conversion efficiency. What is that telling you? That's telling you that your NOx sensors are detecting that you're not able to convert that NOx as expected. So what do you need to do? Okay, you need to make sure that what what is going to, first of all, you need to look at what is going to cause your NOx to convert, DEF. Okay, so we need to make sure DEF is being delivered. If DEF is being delivered correctly, then we need to test the sensors. If the sensors are reading correctly, then we need to look for, you know, excessive buildup. If you have any other existing faults that could be causing your NOx or excessive NOx in the one box or in your after treatment system, that could be an issue too. So all, all this needs to be taken, you know, if, 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 you, if it's a Cascadia, and I'm, I'm trying to, uh, let me see if I can, uh, 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 pronounce this, your, your name correctly or your, or your tag correctly is LA to Toronto. So I'm guessing you drive from LA to Toronto just from your name. So if you're running that route, LA to Toronto, you may be coming through Dallas and you may not, I don't actually, I'm thinking about Louisiana. I'm sorry. You're not coming through Dallas. So anyway, it, it, have him watch the video. I just, I just put the video up on the link there. Have him check that video out. And guys, if you don't have confidence in that mechanic, just leave. Just leave that location. It, they're, they're just going to waste your money. They're going to waste your money. Wow, chat is on fire, guys. Let me catch up to you guys. Transport says, Javier G, how are you, how are you cleaning it? Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, he's, he's asking, Javier, how are you cleaning it? Toronto has another to add on to it. He says, and it was at 96.5 dirty. He said around 470. These filters come in to the end of their service life. He said, he said, this is most likely the problem, not my NOx sensor as they have never been changed. Okay. So if he's running the NOx conversion efficiency or uh, a low temp with the DEF uh, disabled and you don't have any drifting, you haven't had your filter clean. That is something that needs to get done. Your filter does need to be clean at 400K. Is it the end of the service life? I don't recommend it's at the end of its service life. Uh, it, you just may need to get it clean, check the DOC and retest. Those are items that need to get done, but I still wouldn't ignore the fact that all the other items need to be checked, like the NOx, uh, make sure the NOx aren't drifting with the low temp, low temp uh, region. He also added on, Toronto's ass also added on that, does this seem accurate? He said he wants to replace DPF filter, 7th injector, and DE, DEF filter or about for about two grand. Uh, if he's going to clean the filter, uh, I don't know why he wants to replace the seventh injector. Usually you just clean that and you can remove it and clean it unless it's faulted out. If he's telling you it's faulted out and there's fault codes, it's possible that you can have a seventh injector. Uh, if we're talking about a DD 15, usually that, that seventh injector, all it is, is just a nozzle that's spraying fuel into the, into the exhaust side. So what I see a lot of is a lot of buildup that ends up coming up on that seventh injector. So if you have a seventh injector that's faulted out and it's showing faulted out, then yeah, you could replace that seventh injector. But if it's not faulted out and you're not just hitting temperatures, then you know i would look into just getting it cleaned out also checking out your egr cooler to make sure it's not clogged up that 400 that 400 500k mark that's a very high mileage mark where you're going to have a lot of soot build up you're going to have nox uh nox conversion faults because of soot build up so checking your, your system thoroughly making sure that your 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 egr cooler is not clogged up your differential pressure sensor is not clogged up your egr uh, differential pressure is not clogged up uh, you know, honestly, LA to Toronto, I would suggest probably uh, having him check the truck out even further or more thoroughly. Uh, what type of engine? Um, just from what your just from what your decal looks like or your uh, your profile pick looks like. It looks like a Cascadia, so we're probably talking about a DD15. Those are the things I would get checked out. If he's you know, if he wants to replace the filters and not clean them. You know, there should be a reason on why those filters need to be replaced. If they're cracked, 
uh, if they're burnt, uh, something's going on with them. Why, why is he wanting to replace them? Is he just wanting to replace them because he wants to sell you more filters or what's going on with that? So I would, that would be something that I would look into. Usually at 400 K, uh, Detroit is recommend you clean them, not replace them unless you're having issues with high back pressure. If they're cracked, if you, if you shine the light through them, you can see the light. If the, if it's not meeting flow specs after cleaning, then yes, I would say, hey, these filters need to be replaced. But if it's a one-box system, then I would definitely recommend you get the DLC cleaned as well. So keep all this in mind. Javier says, was thinking, uh, was, uh, was, was thinking hot water, high-pressure wash. Okay, Javier, as I mentioned, you can try that out. I haven't tried it out ourselves uh you know but i would i would definitely recommend uh getting a flow test done uh, transport mentions why risk it you might end up damaging the filter and then and then and then dealers sometimes won't take uh take for a core and end up costing you more now if your filter is damaged cleaning is not going to fix it okay if you suspect that your filter is damaged uh, are you wanting to do this for preventive maintenance? That's something that's going to be uh, very, very good to do uh, is, is prevent maintenance. So if you if it's PM time and you need to clean the filter, you know, uh, get it clean, get it clean. You know, if you want to clean it yourself, you could try. I, I don't do that in house. We don't clean filters here. I don't recommend doing this. Uh, you know, you could you could put all this time and effort in kind of getting these filters clean and still have an issue. All right. And transport also adds, remember, you get what you pay for. That is completely correct, guys. That is 100% correct. And it comes with mechanics as well. You can buy, not buy, you can hire a cheap technician. And, you know, I, I, I speak from experience because I have hired some guys, cheap mechanics. And this is, this is way, you know, years, years ago. I want to say probably anywhere from six to seven years ago i needed the help we got a me i got mechanics on and they 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 were the headache i had to get rid of them right away they were causing problems they weren't you know fixing stuff right uh and you know so if you go to a shop that's cheap and you got guys that are you know they're not wearing uniforms one thing that's gonna tell you hey you know what this guy is not even taking his job serious where he doesn't come in uniform he's in civilian clothes He's dirty, you know, dirty is one thing, okay? Getting dirty, it's easy to get dirty with these trucks just by checking them out, doing a walk around. You can get dirty looking at them. But if it's, if it's like over the top dirty where their face is all greasy and they're just messy and they, you, they're they not carrying their self clean, if they if they don't have a hat on and their hat's not, not not cleaned up, these if they're not shaved, these are items that need you need to look at as a technician because if they're not taking care of themselves, I guarantee they're not going to take care of your truck. They may act like a mechanic uh, in the shop. They might they might perceive themselves as a technician, but when it comes to real troubleshooting technical work, they might not be who you need. So keep that in mind. Hey, I do. Uh, uh, Rasa says he wishes that we were in Houston. Me too. Uh, one day we will have a shop in Houston and we will have a shop in the East Coast and West Coast and we'll be able to service all you guys. But it takes time. I want to I don't want to be like a dealer and have all this capacity and not and just a, just a shop full of minions. Uh, I don't want that. You know, I see it. I see it at the dealers. They got just a shop full of minions running around. Uh, and it's just not safe and it's just not, uh, it's not buyer friendly guys. So what's up from Maine? Wow. That's way up there. I hopefully, hopefully the, uh, hopefully the weather is a lot nicer than it is down here, right here. We're cooking, man. It is hot down here. You could probably fry an egg on a hood. It's so hot out here. Uh, but you know what? We got to go through our cycles. It's summertime. Uh, guys, make sure to get your AC checked. Uh, if your AC is not working right, it's very dangerous to be driving out there with no AC, it's not like a car where you could just roll down your window. Your truck is producing tons of heat off that engine, tons of heat. And it's just going to be too hot for you in there, man. It's going to be a hot box. So keep that in mind. Let's uh, Trey says, let's support Tat so Adam can open more shops. Trey, I appreciate that comment. Uh, as I mentioned, I want to open up more shop, guys, but slowly but surely, guys. If you know anybody in the DFW area that's looking to, for uh, a job, if they're looking for uh, a shop to join and they got experience, have them reach out to me. They can email me at info at tatexpressinc.com. They can call me during a weekday. You know, we're not struggling for technicians right now. We have a very solid team. I'm very happy with the people that we have. 
I just, you know, we're going, we're building a new location. We're getting a lot of more traffic in. I'd like to have somebody in just in case we get uh, to a point where we do have to add another guy on. So, uh, Mr. Martinez, how you doing from Los Angeles? I know how, uh, I know you're taking courses. Hopefully those courses are working fine. I remember you mentioned you were doing uh, uh, some, uh, I think it was locomotives. So hopefully that's working out just fine. Transport has a comment here. He says, my local Volvo dealer is empty. No one is taking, taking their trucks there due to them screwing up every truck. There's only warranty trucks in there. Walk into a dealer today and there's a bunch of kids from UTI. Dealers don't have real mechanics no more. They don't. They don't transport. And this is why we see what we see. You know, if this wasn't the case, I wouldn't get customers telling me that they just spent $7,000 on a one box and they still have low NOx conversion efficiency faults. You know, that's that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, and it, and it's and it's something should be done about it. It's sad. Uh, and, 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 and Rasa says it too. You're right. Right. You're right about that. Another comment right here. My AC takes about one hour after running to blow, uh, blowing cool air. What's the cause of it? You know, I would, if you haven't had your AC service, get it serviced, make sure that, you know, if, if you haven't, if you can't get it serviced right away, the first thing you can do is check, uh, your, check your cab filter, make sure your cab filter is, is not clogged. I see some very dirty cab filters. If your cab filter is not clogged and you have to have your system serviced, that's either having some gauges hooked up so you can look at the pressures. A lot of times as an AC technician, what we have to do is we have to vacuum and, and recharge the system so that we know exactly how much Freon is in the system. We can kind of tell with some gauges if, if your pressures are low, but most of the time if you have a leak, those that gases are getting replaced with air. So not all the time those gauges are going to be 100%. You may be low on Freon. I would suggest getting a uh, getting an AC system, your AC checked out by an experienced shop. Somebody that knows, hey, you know what? At 400 PSI on the high side, my fan should be kicking on. Or at 350 PSI, my fan should be kicking on. They know they need to be checking for the condensers. They need to be checking for blowers. They need to be checking for evaporators being clogged up. You know, those are items, you know, ACs are very, very uh, sensitive systems, just like after treatment systems. So I hate for you to, hey, you know what, this guy is telling me I have to do my whole system. If the system is cooling, it just needs some service. Uh, you know, if it's not, if it's not cooling, then you may have, you know, to repair some parts. But if it's cooling, it may just need some service. So get, keep that in mind, uh, uh, Shandell. Uh, next question, GS says, what is, a, okay, GS um, I just asked, what is a glider kit? A glider kit is basically, basically these trucks aren't going to be around too much longer. I have seen EPA try to crack down on glider kits. Basically, it's it's a newer chassis with an older pre-emissions engine in it. That's what a glider is. But I have seen some articles from, uh, you know, just around the way, that the EPA is cutting down on that. The EPA is really cutting down on emissions. They don't want people to uh, to try to find ways around that. So uh, I don't know how much longer glider kits are going to be around. If you do got a glider kit, you know, you, you can still get it worked on. It's just a chassis with a 60 series. A 60 series is an older, older uh, Detroit 60 series. Most of the time they're going to be pre-emissions. This is the, this is what the DD15 replaced. Uh, so, I mean, there's still a lot of components still available when it comes to parts. But when it comes to hard parts like heads, uh, bigger items, those are a little bit harder to come by. So, Transport says, can you make a video uh, of a multimeter test part sensor harness? Okay, yeah, that, that's a good one. I just did. I had a, I have I had a viewer ask us a few viewers ask us to do one on a wheel seal. We just did that today. Uh, I want to I got to get that one in the works as well with the multimeter. If you guys uh, are good with multimeters, those are one of the most important tools you're going to have in a shop. Uh, you know, back to uh, the customer that I was talking about that had a Volvo uh, experience where they were having uh, where it was losing power. It was acting like it was slipping in gears. It was having issues not going into gear. It, it felt like basically she explained it felt like a transmission problem. So they go to a dealer. The dealer replaced the clutch. And on a Volvo, clutch replacement is not cheap. You know, the clutch is expensive. You're having to replace the actuator, the air module. It's a very expensive repair. So they got the clutch replaced. She leaves there. Problem still exists. 
Okay, so when I'm talking to her, I'm like, now they're telling me it's my transmission. They're dro they actually drop the transmission without inspecting it on the truck. They drop the transmission. She sent me the photos of what they sent, and I deal with transmissions very often. I know what a wore out gear looks like, and these gears were not wore out. Uh, the, the drain plug didn't have excessive metal on it. There was no reason for them to drop this transmission, and now they're telling her to replace the transmission and I was just dumbfounded again about what these guys are leading these customers on to doing. Uh, and I honestly told her, you know what, it's an electrical problem. I, she sent me her code list and I can see there was some communication issues going on with one of the speed sensors and with an automatic transmission, you're definitely gonna have all those sensors that need to be reading all parameters, everything need to be reading correctly, air pressure, all that needs to be reading correctly or it's not gonna shift correctly. If it's a mechanical problem, most of the time it's not gonna be intermitting. If it's a mechan if it's a gear broken inside that, that gear is not gonna uh, you know, get better or work sometimes and then work, a gear is broken. If an injector is bad and it's dead, it's not gonna, most of the time, it's not gonna start working again. If it does work intermitting, then that could be a wiring issue. So that's a good topic about using multimeters. So I appreciate that comment, Transport. Rod, uh, Rodney has a comment here. He says, what's up, Adam? Did you receive my VIN last week concerning the DPF? I believe I did. Uh, were we looking to get that service? You know, I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't really get back to you. I'll make sure to make some uh, notes on that. When were you talking about coming in? You know, sometimes we get really tied up during the weekday, uh, just servicing the customers that are here in the shop. So uh, we, if, if you're looking for prices, I can get you prices. Uh, or bring the truck in. Let us look at it. Why are you? Or what is? What is your DPF concerns? If you're wanting the cleaning, we can get that done. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. I did. I wasn't ignoring you. I just, I didn't get a chance to make it to that comment. So I apologize about that, Ronnie, but I really appreciate you joining us today. I'll make sure to get back to you, uh, later this week. Uh, if you can make it into our shop, come on, let's make, let's make a schedule or make an appointment. Come on in. Let's hook up the computer. Let's, you know, let's look over the truck. I want to advise you on, on your PMs. I want to advise you on what intervals needs are coming up so that we can get a better idea of what we're dealing with. You know, I'd like to see what's going on with the truck. Rasa says, hey, Adam, do you, ha do you have uh, dedicated Volvo D13 software? Rasa, we do use it, and I think Transport already answered it. Transport answered that we use Premium Tech Tool, and that is correct. Now, uh, honestly, the, the software is very useful, very useful, but if you don't have the training to use the software, you can be very, very confused about how Volvo systems set up. Volvo software is probably the most um, advanced software that's out there, uh, I guess I should say. And the reason why I say that is because they want you to use, you have to use a higher processor, you have to use higher memory on your on your laptops. You usually with a like uh, with a D, you know, triple DL, they're not calling for a higher processor speed. But I believe the processor speed on the on the requirements are like a three, a three point two or three point oh. And, you know, you're looking at probably an I five or above. So, you know, if you got to keep that in mind and you got to be able to understand what you're dealing with. What I noticed with Volvo software is not going to be like uh, the other softwares that we use. You, there's tests in here that they'll do where you're not able to run a, a, a conversion test. That's one thing that's different from Volvo software. You don't run a conversion test. You look at the history of the conversions that happen in while the truck is in operation. And if you're and that's that's how you can decipher whether or not it's converting correctly or not. If you're not if you're not converting it correctly, it's going to tell you right then and there that you're below the specific. And I want to say about 80 percent. So usually we go in there and we're able to see the conversion history. And if the if I see that if you're not converting and it's below 80 percent, then we know that something else is going on. Usually on a D13 Volvo after 400,000 miles, you're going to be doing uh, EGR cleanings. EGR cooler cleaning, sorry, EGR cooler cleaning, EGR differential pressure cleaning, intake pressure sensor cleaning, DPF pressure sensor cleaning. These are items that all need to be clean. A seventh injector needs to be clean. All these items need to be clean. So what Volvo has you do in their software is they control, you know, VGT turbos, uh, EGR coolers, EGR valves, 
all these are being used to control the output of the NOx. So Volvo has you run through these this procedure that has the engine changing the different levels of the NOx, and that's how you're able to test your NOx, your NOx sensors. You're 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 literally watching the NOx rise and drop, and you're looking at the different readings from the inlet and the outlet and you're making sure that they're all in sync and they're not spiking and they're not you know drifted apart and that's how you can you know that's how you basically use that software so what i'm basically trying to get to is making sure if you can buy the software but take the time into learning what you're using so you can get the better experience off that software because it's not cheap uh, you want to get manuals as well if you're using those software so that when you do have repairs, you're doing them correctly. I had a customer email me earlier this or last week, and uh, he was wanting to do his EGR cooler cleaning on his own. Uh, and, I, you know, he says he's mechanically inclined, and which is great. But he was asking questions that made me a little bit concerned that, okay, you may be mechanically inclined, but you're not, you haven't worked on a, on a Volvo D13 or a Volvo engine. And there's specific items that you need to watch out for. You know, you can strip items that can cause more damage and cause you more time. Uh, he was already wanting to, you know, cut some corners when not buying the complete kit. Uh, you know, those are items that, you know, that kind of just really raise suspicion on, on me whether or not I should recommend you do that type of service on your own. You know, those type of services can be very tough. You can have broken boats that can cause more time. So if you don't have the right equipment to get those boats off, dealing with corrosion, that's going to be another item you're running into as well. Rodney says, where is the cabin filter located on this 2015 Volvo? Okay, uh, you know, on your 2015 Volvo, your cabin filter should be where the rain guard is on the passenger side. There's going to be a shield up there. That's where your that's where your filter is in. It should be in there. Um, you know, I, I I haven't replaced a cabin and air filter, but I I I think it's. I, I'm sorry, I, I kind of had a just brain dead. I guess I'm just a little tired. But uh, give me a second. But um, that should be where it is, Rodney. If it's not there, um, uh, it should. I don't think it's inside. I don't think they they stopped putting them inside on uh, these these newer model trucks so keep that in mind jss says tech tool is the volvo software i have it out here in canada i'm coming certified i work with all dealer level softwares that's good to know gs uh, gss thanks for your comment there rasa uh he's he's commenting to you rasa uh, jss thanks for that uh info and uh, he's certified with Cummins, so I guess you have an idea what I'm talking about when you're using Insight, uh, when you're using Triple DL, or you're using Tech Tool. You know, compared to like uh, a generic software that's kind of like a bundle software, like J Pro or something like that, you're gonna see the function. You're gonna be able to do different stuff with dealer software that you're not gonna be able to do. Like, you know, I don't want to bash anybody out there. I'm just letting you know, like, for example, you know, there's this company that keeps calling me Diesel Diesel Laptop. And, you know, I, I tell them, hey, you know what? We're set, guys. Don't worry about us. You know, go ahead and take us off your call list because I'm not interested. This guy is very persistent just calling me. And I don't want to be rude with him, but I'm not interested in his product, you know, because I've dealt with third-party products before, and it's not the same as dealing with dealer products. You get When you're dealing with dealer products or dealer software, you get what that dealer has designed for that engine. You get support. You get information that's very useful. So keep all this in mind, guys. Transport also mentions that it is premium tech tool. I appreciate that, Transport. Uh, JSS says, yes, I've had my red seal since I was 20. Okay, so that's good. I'm ASC certified. If you're if you're certified with Cummins, we, we uh, I have taken Cummins certification courses. They won't give me the certificate because I'm not in a dealer, uh, but it's fine. I know that I, I deal with Cummins all the time. I, I, I have access to every all the information that the dealer has, but just because I haven't worked for them, I, they won't give me certification, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I deal with Cummins all the time. I get Cummins engines here from the dealer. I get Cummins engines here from customers buying new trucks that want us to check these out. I'm very, I'm very, uh, but I'm, that's very nice to know. I appreciate that. I'm pretty sure working with the dealer is how you got that. Uh, if not, it's probably something different in Canada. They don't offer that. I've taken Cummins courses myself. 
Uh, but I, like as I mentioned, they won't give me the, they will give me this. They won't give me the actual certificate. They give me a, like a, a certificate of completion, but I won't become certified because I haven't worked with the dealer is basically what they told me. So I'm fine with that, though. Uh, Transport says that thing is amazing. Uh, OK, premium tech tool. I guess that's what you're talking about. There's so many tests and options in that software. You're right. So Transport is sharing his information about uh, his experience with tech tool. And it is it is very useful. Uh, understanding it is very, very, you know, very useful to understand it. And having the right computer for that software is very important. If you don't have the right computer for that software, man, you're going to be waiting for that to load. You're going to be waiting for that con to connect. It takes forever. So keep that in mind. Um, JSS mentions we have proper education to go through in Canada in order to get certified. And yes, lots of tests. You know what? I'm ASC certified. I don't have a patch on. I should have my patch on. I should be more proud of it. And I am proud of it. Uh, and the tests are not easy, man. You're sitting there and you're testing for an hour, if that. And and those those tests are really, really specific tests. They're over a wide range of testing, a wide range of questions about different applications, about high pressure fuel systems, about high, uh, just, just different cylinders, you know, just a lot of different tests. So if that's something that's interests you transport, you should dig into that. You can start with ASC certification. And if you do get Cummins uh, software, you can get a uh, license to get Cummins training online as well. Of course, you have to pay for it. Uh, then you offer the classes. The classes are going to probably be around $1,800 to $2,000 a piece. And that's going to be for each platform. That's going to be for like a ISX-15. You're going to be paying $2,000 for that course. Uh, you know, the older models, if you're going to be doing Marine, if you're going to be doing gen sets, those are all going to have to be paid for. So keep all that in mind. Uh, education is not cheap, but guys, it's really worth it. Uh, that's why I dig my, I dig, I dig, you know, I got all these manuals back here. I've, I've read a lot of these manuals. Uh, now they're all digitized, you know, they're all online. So I don't really have to thumb through a book anymore. Some of the older trucks, like I just had to order a few months ago, uh, uh, a Mac that we don't really see often and I didn't have access online. So I had to order that book, but well, guys, education is always going to be there. Uh, you know, if you read at least an hour a day, you can put your yourself through college 10 times over throughout your life. So keep all that in mind. Now, that's a takeaway from Zig. Uh, Transport also asks about what, what Red Seal is. Impro Standard Canada Trade Certificate Ticket. So I, that may be something, JSS Transport, that may be something that uh, Canada has, like the same that we have with ASC certification. So... Transport, if you're looking to get certified, uh, you know, start with ASC. I'm ASC certified in medium and heavy duty. I would like to get more certificates, uh, but since I'm mostly just medium and heavy duty diesel, that's mostly what I, that's what I, that's what I went for. And that's what I just, I just actually renewed last year. So uh, keep all that in mind. Moses got a comment here. I have a 60 series Detroit engine and I'm running a little bit hot, 210. I'm averaging now my fan does don't kick in until it reaches 225 is that normal no it's not uh that seems a little high i would definitely get your cooling system checked out first uh if you haven't had the radiator replaced you may have a clogged up radiator it's not able to cool that off correctly uh so keep all that get all that checked out uh it's summertime it's very hot you're going to be running higher temperatures depending on what year that 60 series is if it's the year that they started introducing the egr valves and the uh dpf filters you want to be very careful about getting those engines hot uh 60 series what they did before they redesigned to the dd15 uh, so that they can keep the engine cooler and still able to do these in-cylinder uh, uh, in-cylinder corrections for NOx, what they were doing is regening, not regening, recirculating more of the exhaust back into the cylinder. And what they what they ended up doing was actually taking more metal out of the head, so that they can run more coolant through the head. But what that did was actually made the head weaker. So if you're running hot. You don't get that service. You can get a cracked head very easily. So keep that in mind, Moses. Hopefully that helps. GS, you should drop flyers at truck stop. Most mechanics don't know a lot. Great info here. Hey, GS, you know what? I like that idea. I like that idea about dropping flyers off. When I first started back in 2007, 2008, 
that's how I generated business. We used to go and drop flyers off. I remember, I remember I went to a FedEx yard and we're still close to this FedEx because we get a lot of customers from FedEx. This is FedEx ground. So a lot of those guys are owner operators, but it's funny because a long time when that, this is when I was first starting my business. I, I showed up at FedEx. I probably grabbed a couple customers from FedEx. They started using me very nice people owner operators so i was servicing you know we pick up trucks from their yard from the uh, fedex yard i i decided to put flyers on all the fedex trucks and a competitor this is before he knew me a competitor uh you know he's still in this area a competitor basically i see him took my flyer off the truck and threw it on the ground and at that time i'm like okay you know whatever you know you know but then now as time goes by it's just funny to see where that competitor is now and where we're and where I am at now. So it's very, it's very, uh, it's very fulfilling, I guess you should say. Uh, GS, I really appreciate that comment. And it really brought some back some memories about passing out flyers. You know, that's, I'm a real, I'm, I'm a hardcore salesman. I've, I've sold a lot of different items in my life. Uh, I've read a lot of different sales books. I, I, I do like selling. Uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're in the business of service, selling is going to be in line with, with, with service and, 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 uh, you know, that, that's a good, that's a good idea. You know, a lot of times now we're everything. So digitized, we do everything online. Uh, so yeah, maybe I would get out there on a truck stop one day. I, uh, probably get ran off again, but you know, it's, it's very exciting just to think back on those days. Sun has another comment. If you keep getting screwed, let the manufacturer know. I do know that Cummins will investigate, especially if it's after treatment related. And you're right. You know, Cummins have got a lot of guidelines now. You know, I, I had a customer, I'd had a turbo replaced and he was telling me he had his turbo replaced so many times. And Cummins is very specific about this. If you have oil passing through your turbo, not every time it's going to be a bad turbo. Okay. If you check out a video that I did, and it was a video that I did about uh, DD15 turbo replacement. And I explained there how turbos are actually set up. Turbos don't have like a seal, like a rubber seal or anything in there. So if the seal goes bad, it's leaking. Come, you know, turbos don't have that. Turbos, they're running so hot temperature that their seals are basically like O-rings on a, or, I'm sorry, they're like piston rings on a piston. They're basically just set in there so that when pressure is up, it, they're sealed. If pressure is down, then they're they're not sealed. So if your oil level is not draining into your drain into your drain bag tube, your oil is getting fed into the turbo but not draining down. And that turbo can be filling with oil, passing oil. If you have a, a, a Cummins engine with high mileage and you have high crankcase pressure, that pressure be, could be going into the the, the actual uh, system and causing that oil to pass. If you have a clogged air filter, you can have uh, oil being sucked in from the from the engine instead of being sucked in from the intake. So Cummins has come out with a lot of different specs on on warranty they don't want to warranty turbos just because they're passing oil i've seen oil pass through a turbo uh just because the crankcase filter was clogged up so yeah you're right you're right cummins is investigating a lot uh i'm not sure how they're investigating uh shops that are doing incorrect work uh, but you know, they are investigating, uh, you know, warranty stuff that are outside of, outside of it. JSS says, don't clean the filters with water. LOL. Okay. I appreciate that. Do it proper. JSS just mentioned that he's a certified mechanic out of Canada. He's red seal certified, which is basically, I want to say, I'd have to look it up, but just off from what he's explained, it sounds like it's a, a, a way that they do the certification here, but it's ASC. Um, and he's mentioning, uh, to you not to clean your filters with water. So, and I'm not recommend you do that as well. So got another question here. Hey bro, I have a DD 15. When I accelerate on the hill from a stop, I hear on the passenger side whistle and air being sucked or leaking. Okay. If you hear that, okay, basically your turbo is your exhaust pressure is, is pushing your turbo. Okay. Your exhaust pressure is building up and it spins the, it spins the, 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 the turbine on the hot side of your turbo on the cold side of your turbo. It's tubed into your intake for your, for your, uh, air filter. So it's sucking air from that and it pushes through the air cooler. It goes into the intake and that's how you make boost pressure. If you have, if you're trying to make power and you hear whistling, hissling, uh, sucking air, you have a leak somewhere. It needs to be checked. 
you, if you can probably check by yourself by looking and see if you see any kind of soot build up around any clamps or anything like that. If you can't find it that way, then you can have somebody accelerate the truck, use soap and water, then soap the whole system, soap the exhaust side, so soap the cold side, so everything going all the way to the intake. If you have a boost leak, you should be able to find it with soap and water. If you can't find it, we have boost pressure testers that we use here. I did a video. I did a video on that as well. Check that video out. That was. Uh, let me go back and see the topic on that video. I think it was boost pressure on a boost pressure leak on a turbo on the uh, on a Volvo. Uh, low low power on a Volvo and what we did is we did a boost pressure test we see that very often so get that checked out DD15s most of the time it's going to be an exhaust leak is what I see on those so hopefully that helps you um, let me see here JSS says uh, it will say if your filter passes or fails too okay we do it proper in proper in uh, Canada okay I appreciate that Canada appreciate them views uh, we get a lot of views from Canada I get a lot of calls from Canada as well I really appreciate all the support. And one day I'd like to visit Canada. I've never been there before. Uh, I'd like to go there someday. I just put in some Lucas stabilizer. GS, okay, Lucas stabilizer and what truck? Are you using a DD15? Let me go back to your comments here. Uh, DD15, be careful with Lucas. Lucas does thicken up the oil. So on a cold start is the only thing that would be my concern because the, the cams are not going to be able to get that oil that quick. Uh, cams are going to be riding on aluminum housings that don't have any bearing, any replaceable bearings. So want to be careful with that. You don't want dry starts. It's probably a camp on the turbo is basically what transport mentioned to the boost leak that we hear there. So as that's, yeah, I appreciate that comment. GS, is it possible to reuse DPF clamps? You know, it is, but I don't recommend it because it's just a pain in the butt to put all that back together and you have a leak. You know, uh, a lot of times when those clamps are coming off, they're very, uh, they're very built up with crud uh, on the threads. Uh, they're, you know, the gaskets are gone. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend reusing DPF clamps uh, if you can. If they're, they're, if they're super in good condition, if they look in great condition, then yeah, you can probably reuse them. But if they're all rusted and they're already having problems coming off, more than likely they're going to be problems going back on. And what's going to be even worse than that? Is if you have it all back together and your clamps are leaking, then you have to take it all about all apart again and put it all back together. It's just a waste of time. Uh, Rodney has another question here. RPS transport. Can you service the automatic transmission on a Volvo, a Volvo, D, uh, Volvo 2015? Yes, we can. An I shift. We have uh, service uh, RPS. Uh, I'm not sure if you were uh, trying to get to another uh, comment or another viewer. But Rodney, we sure do service. We actually are doing a clutch job right now in the shop for a transmission issue on a uh, Volvo. Uh, most of the time, I see air uh, air problems like uh, you know, leaking airlines going to the system. And anytime you don't have efficient air and you're not servicing, for example, if you got an old dryer on there, say you got over four hundred thousand miles, five hundred thousand miles, and you have a uh, you don't you haven't ever replaced your air dryer, that's going to be causing you some issues over time. Those air dryers need to be replaced. Uh, we're probably looking at 150k, you know, a year. I mean, 150k uh, uh, intervals, which is sometimes a year, is sometimes yearly. So keep all that in mind. At transport, oh, we got a question. Oh, oh, we got another uh, comment here. At transport says, I changed the clamps, and the power is also less than before. Okay, that's just another indication you have some kind of leak somewhere. If you're hearing it during a load and it's a whistle or a sucking noise, that means you have a leak somewhere. You may need some help finding that. You may have somebody throttle it and soap and water it, like I mentioned before. Test on, check the whole system out. Sometimes those exhaust leaks can be very tricky to find. So keep that in mind. Got another comment here. Is there a way to check the condition of the DPF filter on a computer without removing it? There sure is. There sure is. Um, what we do is we'll run a test to look at back pressure. We look at differential pressure. Uh, we run a regen to look at the temperature readings. Uh, we look at during the regen if temperatures or pressures are dropping. These are 
all items that need to be checked before filters need to be replaced. If you're doing it for a PM purposes, not every time you're going to see a clogged filter. If you're at 400K and you want to get it cleaned up for preventive maintenance, you're not going to see issues doing a regen. You know, of course, if you want to wait till the problem can happen, it may happen in a very inconvenient time. So keeping up with uh, keeping up with your maintenance, your preventive maintenance is very important to keep these trucks on the road, guys. So I appreciate all these comments, guys. I appreciate all this uh, all this activity. Uh, appreciate all the support, all, all you guys coming in and, and seeing us during the week, all the calls you got, all the calls we get over, you know, and I appreciate the calls, guys. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not 100 percent able to get back to you guys uh, right away. Uh, I do listen to some of the messages. Uh, you know, a lot of times if you guys are already in the shop and you and, and you're asking questions about, you know, this, you know, whatever the case may be, and you're already in the shop. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I would just think about why did you choose that shop in the first place? If if you don't have confidence in them to, uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying just give them the confidence. Don't give them the confidence. If you see that the guys are out of uniform and they don't have uh, uniforms on, they don't keep their, their area clean, uh, then definitely I would not get them service there. If they don't have any ways to get um you know, get get their get their uh, if their morale is down, if their guys are dragging butt, if nobody has a smile on their face, it's not easy to work on these trucks. So having good morale, having a good attitude, you most of the time you're gonna have good service that way. Okay, so keep all that in mind. Uh, definitely, there are ways to check the DPF filter before pulling it. Pluck has a question here. He says, if you buy a used truck, maybe a 2016 model with 400K to 500K, should you expect to have the DPF filter cleaned and soot in the engine cleaned? And what is the estimated cost? Okay, I appreciate that question and definitely get all that done. I always recommend uh, viewers that uh, ask about where they can find a used, good used truck. If issues are, you know, where, where, what happens when I buy a good used truck? You know, there's, there's, you always want to look for maintenance history. Okay, you don't, you want to know what, what's happening at 400 and 500 thousand mile mark. You want to, you want to know, was there any services done? Was there any preventive maintenance done? Or am I going to get a truck? that all these services are going to start hitting and they're going to hit at an inconvenient time because you just paid for the truck. Uh, so getting this, getting those maintenance histories checked out, you can look at maintenance intervals online or you can email us. I can send you maintenance, a maintenance interview for your truck. Uh, you just email us here at info at TATExpressInc.com. I'm going to put it in the comment section of the video. That way it stays there uh, and you guys can view that later on when you're ready. Um, so info at tatexpressinc.com. You can email me uh, if you need uh, maintenance intervals for your engine, and I'll send it over to you guys so that you can stay on top of your maintenance, guys. Staying on top of maintenance is going to be the best deal or the best plan on getting staying out of a shop, guys. So uh, Frankie has a uh, comment here. Um, whoa, I just missed it. Okay. Frankie has a comment. When replacing a kingpin, you get dirty as hell. You sure do. Getting... Bro, I mean, I just did a wheel seal replacement, and I try to be as clean as possible. But, yeah, you're going to get dirty, Frankie. And I'm not saying that dirty mechanics are bad mechanics. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm saying that a mechanic that's not keeping himself up where it comes to clean, shaved, uh, dressed, uniform, uh, you may you may want to just kind of be careful with the service that you're getting. You may it may reflect. I should say it may reflect the service that you will receive, Frankie. So I, I, I didn't I didn't want to. I'm not trying. Hopefully I didn't offend anybody. I know you can get dirty just by walking. You can if you want to check tire pressure on a truck, you're gonna get dirty. It's so easy to get dirty on these trucks. So I understand. But if you got a guy that just did one oil change and he's drenched, you can't even tell the color of his skin. Then there may be an issue with that technician. Okay, so keep all that in mind. Frankie says love your videos bro greetings from los angeles you get a lot i get a lot of views out there in los angeles i might need to go out there and visit i'd like to open a shop out there in los angeles maybe maybe not in los angeles you guys are kind of strict out there i feel there's a lot of regulations going on out there it's basically the uh, birthplace of all the regulations so i wonder how i wonder how shops are are, are having to deal with 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 uh with la very interesting no Larry Mobile Detailing says it's hard to find a good shop. It is. It's very hard. It's very hard. And uh, that's why, you know, we try to give you guys the best service possible here. 
you, you know, we got procedures in place. We got standard operating procedures in place. Uh, we got quality control in place. We got training in place. These are all items that need to get done to have a successful repair shop. A lot of people don't want to take that above and beyond approach. They want to say, hey, you know what? Let me get in here and let me swap this out. Let me get out of here. Let me drink some beer after work. There's nothing wrong with drinking beer. I'm just saying you shouldn't be thinking about drinking beer all day. Uh, okay, so I appreciate that comment, Larry. Uh, got another comment here. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I apologize. But he says, any experience with reefer repair? It would be great if you could make a video about it. Okay, yeah, I do. Re, we do re, do reefer repair. Uh, we do service on reefers. Uh, we do service on Thermal Kings. We do, if it's any major components, we usually, I have a guy that comes in and does the major components. Like if you have a condenser leaking, if you have evaporators that are, are messed up and then whole big, big jobs like that where we have to remove the whole unit, then we, I would outsource that job. But the, the mental, the, ma the maintenance here, we do do. Uh, we do Freon. We can re recharge your Freon. We do belt changes. Uh, we can do troubleshooting on if you're having any sensor faults, if you're having any cut off, if you're having issues with the starting charging systems, we can work on after treatment systems. I'm sorry, with uh, reefer systems as well. We have reefer trailers here now. I should, yeah, you're right. I should do videos on that. Trey says you can also support Tat by buying Adam a coffee. I appreciate that. Um, guys, if you want to support the channel, if any of this information has helped you, if any of this information has saved you money, uh, hit me up on Cash App. Cash App, you go to your app store, you download Cash App. It's a very trustworthy site, a very trustworthy app. A lot of people use it. You can link it to a bank card, link it to a bank account, and you can send us uh, you can send us a tip. You can it's not needed, but it's very appreciated to help support the channel. My cash code is T A T is money sign T A T Express. Uh, so guys, if you it's very appreciated if you want to support the channel. I appreciate guys the guys that have supported the channel. I appreciate that. I get cash apps throughout the week, and I really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, so uh, honestly, I get a lot. Uh, I got a lot. Get a lot of comments here. Let me catch up to them. Here we go. Jay says, Jay says at Tat, how's it going? Uh, do you know the service intervals for a Eaton Fuller 13 speed for changing the fluid? 500k, 500k. Uh, check to see if it's got an EG. If it's got, I'm sorry. If it has an oil cooler. If it has an oil cooler. Uh, then you're going to run synthetic, uh, or you're actually going to run a different style oil. I want to, I'm sorry. I think I'm getting those mixed up. It should or should not have an oil cooler. You can still run synthetic 50 every 500 K. Okay. If you want to send me the, uh, the actual uh, model number of that Eaton Fuller, I can actually, actually give you exactly the intervals, but the intervals are always going to be 500. What I meant is I'm going to be able to give you the oil weight. But intervals are all the same. Intervals are always going to be 500K for the transmission, 500K for the differentials. That's going to be all, all three boxes. Basically, three box service is what that's called at 500K. So hopefully that helps. Chris says, what's good, Adam? Everything's good over here, guys. We are staying cool. We're going to go to the site today to shoot some more video on the new site. Guys, they are cleaning that site out. They're grading it. They're moving dirt all around. I, I, I'm supposed to go later. I'm supposed to go this week, and they're gonna actually let me drive uh, an excavator and a dozer. And we're, we're I'm, I'm trying to coordinate uh, to get the cameraman out there at the same time. So it's kind of tough to get all this scheduled. We're we're busy during the week, but I'm gonna be getting some video of me and the excavator and the dozer uh, while they're cleaning out the new lot. We're very excited about that. They're saying it's gonna be done by December. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully everything comes uh, comes on schedule, and we're gonna be moving over there into our new location guys if you have visit us and, and you notice the little bit of clutter that's going on in the office i apologize about that but our new driver lounge is going to be just dedicated to you guys we're going to have the sofa set out with you guys so we're very excited about that guys i'm sorry if you did see us if you did visit us and, and our, our our lounge is not that great it's not, it's not bad we have seats we have uh, tvs uh, there's a hotel right next door guys. So it's very convenient. I'm not saying it's bad But it's gonna be better when we get to the new shop and we're all excited about that So transport says Adam cheap people should not be in trucking These guys have lights on the dash and keep driving they go way past their maintenance They always buy cheap parts instead of OEM, you know, I I see it as well uh, And most of the time, you know, it's tough for us to service those type of trucks just because there's so much already piled up already 
There's so much maintenance that's been neglected. So when they come in and they finally need to repair, there's just the list goes on and on. So yeah, I can understand. I can understand where where you where that comment comes from. Transport also says then they then they uh they want to okay to try tr they want to cry that their truck is bad and having problems. You know, you know, I don't, I don't, I try not to offend nobody on the channel, you know, so, you know, I just, I just want to be, you know, there are people that don't want to do maintenance and everybody has their issues on why they're skipping out on maintenance, but just keep in mind, guys, if you're skipping out on maintenance and you have major issues and you bring them in the shop, these are the items that are, that technicians look for, qualified technicians, experienced shops that, that are going to be dealing with your truck if you're skipping out on maintenance and we can we can see it we can see it as soon as you pull in the truck we can see it we can see what's been skipped out on and it's not it's not helpful it's not helpful for us and it's not helpful for you so keep that in mind uh and transport also mentions you have to spend money to make money keep your truck healthy now spending money on your truck is is gonna happen you know there's it's statistically shown that maintenance is probably going to be one of your second largest bill. The first is going to be fuel. The second is going to be maintenance. Okay. You don't want to cut back on maintenance because maintenance, you need to factor in maintenance in your budget. That needs to be factored in on what you're bringing in because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Repairs are going to happen. They're not avoidable guys. So keep that in mind. Hopefully uh, that helps. That was just a little bit of financial advice right there. Uh, okay, our next comment says, when looking for a good used truck, how can you check the kingpins? Thanks, Adam. Okay, so the only way to check kingpins, first you want to look at tire wear. If you have t funny tire wear, then you, they may have some issues with suspension. Look at mileage. If you have high mileage, over five, 600K, uh, you know, depending on road train, uh, road terrain, they could have some, you know, front end, front end issues. But the real way to check a kingpin is bringing it up on a jack, bringing the pressure off the wheel, and checking the end plate. You're gonna use a, uh, you're gonna use a dial indicator. You're gonna mount it on the axle, and you're gonna look for, uh, you're gonna look for play. Uh, some mechanics are just gonna move it, and yeah, you're gonna feel some sort of play. But at the same time, if you're not measuring it with a dial indicator, how much play is actually there? You know, you know, with with your hands, you can feel it, but with a dial indicator, you can see it. You know, you can see, and if it's past the minimum requirement, then you know you got bad kingpins. So, and make sure if you do get kingpins replaced to have everything checked out. You want to get tie rod checked out and also draglings. Those are items that wear out very often. Check your suspension as well, your your U bolts where your spring is mounted to your axle. Make sure you don't have any rust bleeding, any kind of movement going on there. That's very important to check as well. Uh, next item, our next custom, next uh, comment I have here is high tap. My truck shuts down randomly while driving. Someone told me it normally happens to the DD13 or 15. Any advice? Okay, so randomly shutting down while driving is not normal. That is not normal. That is dangerous. I would get that truck checked out. You can. I mean, you're losing. You're losing control of the truck on the road. Basically, you don't have any power. You, I mean, your engine stops running. You don't have power steering. Uh, you know, if, if, if you, if your air is low on your engines turned off, how is your air going to stay up? That is not normal. That is not normal. That's probably going, it's, it sounds like an electrical problem. I would start with your batteries, making sure your battery terminals are tight. Uh, Detroit's Detroit's have a lot of the newer trucks will have low voltage, low voltage cutoffs. So basically if they sense the voltage is dropping, then they're going to start shutting stuff off so that you don't kill the entire battery. So checking out your batteries and everything, your charging system is very important. Guys, I've been going on for an hour and a half almost. So guys, I'm going to try to get this wrapped up. I'm going to try to catch up to all these comments. It looks like I'm getting finally getting down to the bottom. Uh, trucker says, Trucker says, can I connect an e EPU to a generator? Uh, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, an APU is a generator. An APU has a uh, has an alternator on it. Uh, some of the generators or some of the APUs are built as generators, and then they just build electricity and run an electric uh, electric AC unit. So I don't know. I don't know if it's not if it's not manufactured that way. I would just take precaution. You know, make sure you wire and everything. You're securing everything correctly. So keep all that in mind, trucker. Jay, thanks for the comment. GS says, can you get in trouble for not being certified? Uh, well, they're not certified requirements to open, but you can definitely get yourself into a bind 
when it comes to customers because how are you going to build customer confidence? How are you going to build customer relationship if you don't show them that you have some kind of certification? How are you going to be able to work on their trucks? What are you going to show them that, hey, you know what? I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, so certifications go a long way. Certifications are definitely something that I would recommend if you're going to be repairing trucks. Uh, so keep all that in mind. Transport has a comment for Ali. He says it's a powerful, it's a, it's a power distribution box under your hood driver's side by the firewall. It could be that. It could be that. I've also seen the ones on uh, that's under the under the uh, behind the glove box. That's your that's your main SAM module. Uh, so what I would do is get it actually uh, get it checked out, get it troubleshot. The SAM module that we had just replaced last week. Uh, that's basically was in the cab uh, uh, behind the behind the glove box on the passenger seat. Now that what he was having, he would just have lights flashing all over the place, and and basically that's going to be something going on with your SAM, your SAM module. So get that checked out. Um, definitely get it checked out by an experienced shop before swapping parts, because if it's not the one under the hood, and if it's one under the dash, you're gonna have to replace that as well. So keep that in mind. Another comment here. Thanks for the answer. I will come by and just let you check it. Thanks for the good work two weeks ago. I appreciate that comment. I'm glad you came by. Uh, I, I think I remember seeing a comment uh, on a video that you, uh, on one of the videos that we released. I was trying to get some more information from my manager, but I couldn't I couldn't get as much information as I would like. So hopefully you come by. Yeah, if you're still having problems, come on by. Be more happy to help you. Frankie says, how much is it to, how much is to is the fine for deleting one box in Texas? I honestly don't know and I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to go through that. Uh, I have had some customers call me about having to reinstall uh, after treatment systems. I don't know what the fines are, but I know the fines for shops are hefty. Uh, I got a I got a shop that I know of in um, in Maryland that got fined pretty heavily. I think it was like four hundred and fifty thousand uh, is what they got fined and it almost put them out of business. That's a lot of money. Uh, that, that's a shop. That's a shop. Uh, so GS says, what size air tank do you recommend for a shop? Depends on how big your shop is. You know, uh, when I started off, I started off with a gas compressor. And then I went with a stand-up compressor. Uh, it was like a pretty, you know, pretty standard compressor. You want to make sure you're getting enough CFNs to your, to your gun uh, when you're taking uh, lug nuts off, uh, when you're taking wheels off. So CFNs is very, very important. Uh, make sure like for example if you're using a one inch impact to take wheels off you want to look to cfn recommendations uh, and then you want to look at the manufacturer uh, recommendations for the pipe size as well because if you got a big compressor and you got small pipe airflow is not going to be able to make it we run a pretty large compressor 15 i think i think it's a 15 horsepower ingersoll pretty it took us a while to get to that t size of a compressor but of course the shop is pretty large so we have piping through the whole shop so that compressor uh, pretty much does a lot of work. So, uh, where is everybody watching from? Is what uh, what Trey's asking, and and uh, transport uh, answer is Earth. Uh, yeah, we we're all watching from Earth. Uh, well, you know, I don't know. Maybe uh, Telsa is gonna get us uh, some viewers out of Mars one day. I don't know. Uh, Ali says, "Okay, thank you. I hope Adam will answer it." Okay, yeah. Uh, what it was I'm looking to answer. Uh, yeah, that question about the, the power turning off, that's not normal. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't drive that truck like that. It's going to be something going on with your SAM module system chart. If you, if you can make it to our shop, make it to our shop. We got guys coming from PA, Georgia, Florida, uh, you know, Texas, of course, uh, LA, we got them coming from all over. So, I mean, if, if it's safe enough to get over here, make it to us. I'll be more than happy to help you. If not, have somebody check out the electrical system first off. Guys, I'm going to try to wrap it up. We're getting closer, getting close to the comments. Uh, chat is on fire, guys. I really appreciate all you guys joining. We had 22 likes on right now. Make sure you share the video, guys. If I know you, a lot of you guys are already subscribed to us, but if you know anybody that can use this channel, or can find this channel useful, uh, please share our channel to them so we can get more subscribers. We're trying to hit that 10K mark so we can get more out to you guys we're very excited about that frankie says frankie has another question here he says i was a heavy equipment tech for 17 years i decided to go into the truck industry and damn i'll say it's a little more complicated i can imagine heavy equipment uh you know I, i'm looking at a lot of heavy equipment i can see 
you know, it, it's it looks a little easier, uh, you know, just as long as you have the equipment set up, you know, to be able to service that heavy equipment on site. A lot of this, a lot of that equipment is being serviced on site. Uh, so, you know, that's one thing that you would need to get used to, especially in this Texas heat is being outside. So uh, but welcome to the industry. Uh, yeah, it is a little bit different. Uh, 17 years in the industry. That's a long time uh on the heavy side um so welcome to the, the welcome to the truck side um you know most of the time wherever you're working at you're going to be dealing with after treatment systems so gss bushing uh bushings go out, go out early easily i'm sorry uh bushings go out easily um well bushings do wear out you got to think about the truck is very heavy it is going on these beautiful roads that we have all across america i'm being sarcastic you know how these roads are uh, so yeah, bushings can get wore out. So if you have issues with bushings, get that service guys. You know, I don't want you to wear these tires out very quickly. Got another comment here. What do you seek when you are interviewing a tech? I basically looking for, you should open a shop in Houston. Okay. I appreciate it. this is from the same viewer. Okay. You know, technicians are, I like to figure out what they know. I ask them questions. I ask them what they've been across. I ask them specific questions. Uh, what, what, you know, what, what they do with this code, what they do with that code, you know, uh, because troubleshooting is not easy. Okay. And I don't want to put the troubleshooting all on one person's shoulders. And this is why we have our standard operating, operating procedures in place. This is why we try to keep up with quality control. Everybody's looking at the codes. We're all giving our feedback on what we should do with the code. Uh, if and a lot of times it's a lot of codes that we've seen a lot already, so we already know what to do. But at the same time, asking he's asking a question: What do we? What am I looking at in a tech interview? I'm looking for experience. I'm looking for experience. I'm looking for professionalism. I'm looking for tools. I'm looking for somebody that's self starter, somebody that can get it out there and get it done on their own. Uh, you know, I I I like I can train. But right now, with the amount of workflow that we have, I just can't train right now. I wish I could. I really wish I could train more people and get more people into the industry. But guys, it's you got to understand training somebody takes time. It takes not only one technician, you're taking two technicians that are having to train that. And at this time, uh, you know, of course, everybody's dealing with this pandemic. These guys, you, your drivers, these drivers are having to get back on the road. They got to get on back on the road. So, you know, them taking the time to, you know, us training a guy on their truck, you know, I just not we're not there yet. But that's what i look for in a technician i would like to open up a shop in houston one day i would like to do it at, at a very solid manner where i'm going to be able to give the same service that we're given at this location at the houston location or any other location that we open because i don't want to be like the dealer and grow bigger grow out of my britches and not be able to keep up with the workflow so Oh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully one day we're going to get there and we will. It's just going to take time. It's going to take time. Big Josh says, how easy is it to put a fast system on a Volvo D11 and will it help? OK, if you have aerated fuel, if you have loss of power, I would definitely need to get the system checked out for aerated fuel. I would fix the aerated fuel issue first if you have aeration because that's a very common with a Volvo engine is aerated fuel and aerated fuel is going to give you loss of power. If you haven't had the truck checked out for aerated fuel, get that checked out. Then I would go ahead and re go ahead and put a fast system in. A fast system will help, but if you have aerated fuel or aerated aerated system or aerated fuel system being caused in the head, it don't matter if you put a fast system. It's still going to have the problem. So keep that in mind. Hopefully that helps. Big Josh, thanks for the comment. Uh, we got another question here is KW T680 engine shut down a lot. Dealer said it's okay. No. I mean, at, okay, if it's shutting down at idle and that's idle shutdown, that's normal. Yes. But driving on the road, driving, and it shuts down, that's not normal. That is not normal for a truck to shut down on, while in operation on the road. If you are sitting at idle, those trucks are designed to shut down at idle. So, yes, that is normal. Idle shutdown is normal. Driving on the road and shutting down is not. Okay? GS says... Get an Ace jersey from China. Okay, whatever that means. Uh, okay, uh, Ace jersey from China. Okay, thank you. I, I want to get it. I want to get it. Sounds funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it, I don't know what that's about though. GS, give me some more. Uh, give me some more. Um, let me see. Bushings go out. Uh, where did that come from? Thanks a lot for the comment. Either way, guy. 
Uh, uh, Jazz Gill says, uh, bought a Detroit 60 Series 14 liter big engine, uh, 2005. Found out later it was an old style 12.7 turbo. Can that be a reason burning more oil than usual? Uh, a turbo, a smaller turbo is just going to usually just deal with power. If you're burning oil, you know, it, it, depending on how many miles it is, I mean, it could be seals. It could be seals in the in the valve seals. Uh, you know, if it's not passing it through the exhaust, it's not the turbo. Uh, you got to look for oil passing through any of your components. So uh, I don't think the turbo would cause that if the turbo is not passing oil. Uh, it could be something going on more upstream or any other component. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, Moses says, thank you so much, Adam, for all of this information. I'm learning something new today from here. Thank you. I'm, I'm, that makes me that's so fulfilling. Uh, Moses, thank you for thank you for that comment. That's so fulfilling that you're able to learn something from my channel. And this is why I started the channel, guys, to share my information, to give you guys more insight on what's going on with your truck, to be, help you make better decisions on where you're going to get your truck repaired. Uh, and not just throw money out there because it's not cheap guys. I know it's not cheap. So Moses, that is a very fulfilling comment. You made my day with that comment. Honestly, transport says you should reduce the time answering each question. That way you can answer them all. You know, I appreciate that, but I do get into details and I am a detail driven person. I don't want to give false information out there or not enough information and i don't want to give the wrong perception transport so this is why i try to be thorough with my answers because i don't want to give false information out there i don't i see a lot of false information out there and i don't want to join that crew but i appreciate the comment and i appreciate you joining us all the time guys you know what i'm going to send i'm going to send you something man as soon as we get merch coming in i'm going to send you one transport i appreciate all the all the support very very solid very solid supporter there i really appreciate that larry says i am not even in trucking and i love the video and information makes me want to return to trucking keep up the good work i appreciate that comment larry i like giving the content i like doing the content i wish i could just be a content based only all day but you know i honestly like working in the shop too i like working in the shop i like figuring out these problems i like giving you guys the service that you guys deserve so you know, guess it's just a balance. It's just a balance. So I appreciate your views. Or well, we got a wheel seal job that I just did today. Uh, that video is going to be out this week. We're going to be doing some more shooting of the new site. We're going to be releasing a video of of the project of the new site. So we're very excited about that. And I also have a uh, also have a bad delete in the shop. So hopefully we're going to get that shot today too, because you guys really love that last delete video. And just the destruction. The destruction was awful, guys. This guy broke almost all his rockers. I don't know how this happened. I mean, all his rockers broke. He dropped the bow. And it was just total destruction, man. And he brought it in. We started tearing it down. You know, we were back and forth on what the build is going to cost. I'm like, okay, well, let's tear it down and figure out what's salvageable. And once we found out what wasn't salvageable, he had a bad cam. Uh, rockers messed up. It's injectors seized up. And then I see the plug on the EGR cooler and I asked him who did the delete. And, uh, of course it was, it wasn't us. And I have a feeling it was one of those cheap deletes and I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it was that what caused it, but I want to show you the destruction. So very interested in that. Uh, I had the same issues with my ISX coming, shutting off while running, and it happens to be the harness to the, you know what, if on an ISX Cummins, they do use a, har uh, they use, uh, use electrical signal, they use an electrical signal going to the, um, going to the actuator the fuel actuator so if and it's a little wire it's a little wire i mean it's very small wire and if with all the movement and and all the you know all this vibration you could have some wiring wiring issues and it it ends up losing continuity to that to that particular uh that particular fuel metering valve or the fuel metering shutoff valve and you can have your engine shut off while you're running so it should throw a code though so check your check your computer if you're not throwing a code and i believe your question is, or your answer is directed towards the customer or the viewer about his truck shutting off down the road now it could be you know he's got a dd15 so uh, you know dd15s don't have a fuel actuator so i i, I have a i have a feeling it's going to be the sam module 
uh, on that particular job. So I appreciate your input, though. I really appreciate your input. Um, when who was that? That was um, I don't want to. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, GS says, "Why is my steering wheel not straight? Uh, tires are." Uh, GS, if you've had any service done on your front end, there's more than likely they didn't put that steering wheel back in place. If the keyway on the input shaft of the steering shaft going to your gearbox is keyed and there's no way to move that, then something else could have been misaligned. And the only thing that you're going to be able to do is basically take that steering wheel off, straighten it up and restab it. It's a, it's a pain in the ass job. But that's the only way that you're going to be able to straighten that steering wheel out. Okay, so, but check everything else out first. Make sure everything else is in line before you do that. If you did have any kind of service done recently, that's basically what's going to be happening with that, guys. So, I'm almost going on for two hours, and it's 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 great. I'm, I'm I got I still got a lot of energy. I probably can go on for another hour, but we still have more content to shoot today, guys. So I'm gonna try to wrap it up. I got a few more comments left. Gil says, "Thank you, brother. Not a lot of helpful text nowadays." <laughs> yeah, you could say that again, man. You can say that again. Cash is King Truck and says, "What's up, everybody? How you guys doing?" He's hollering at everybody. Cash is King's always on board. Thanks for watching. We've got some more content coming out. We're excited about the new shop, guys. It's moving right along. They're moving dirt all over the place. I don't know what they're doing, but they're it's it's coming together. It looks like it I, to me. It looks like it's extra work, but uh, basically they're excavating, over excavating, water in it, then putting the dirt back, and then move. It's just a lot of stuff that I didn't know, and then you know there's you know uh i don't know what they're called they're engineers that have to come out and do soil samples and send these soil samples off and and then they're doing just i mean different surveys that go out they go out there and they're measuring stuff it's it's a very interesting project you know i had a viewer contact uh, uh comment i think it's tj he's not on today i don't see him i haven't seen a comment from him today he's probably working but tj asked it would be nice if we could have a uh, uh a somebody there 24 hours filming and i wish we could because there's just so much action going on there guys uh next next thing next question transport why you remove your comments uh gil says thank you brother oh yes sir i already read that one sorry about that big josh here that's where i was Big Josh says the issue I'm having is under load, slight stumbling, and won't pull. Just, just sustaining. Okay, that it depends on what what truck you have, Big John. You got a D11. Uh, okay, that is gonna be uh, aerated fuel. Check for aerated fuel. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not gonna be a hundred percent guaranteed. That's what it is. If you haven't done fuel filters, do fuel filters first. Do the easiest stuff first. Do air filter, fuel filter. If you still have that issue, do a boost pressure test. See if you have any boost leaks. If you don't have any boost leaks, then you may have aerated fuel. Big Josh, so hopefully that helps you. Transport, thank you very much. Uh, Transport says, was well, just a suggestion because I can see you are tired. <laughs> hey, I'm tired because I was in the shop doing a wheel seal and, and videotaping it and, and explaining it at the same time in the heat. And it, yeah, it does get a little tiring. So, I, but I appreciate your concern, transport. I'm good. I'm, I'm very, I'm very strong, man. I could go on for hours, man. I, I work 14-hour days daily. So, you know, my days don't end till, you know, till probably 10, 11 o'clock on a daily basis. So, I'm very used to it. I start early, even on my days off. Uh, but I appreciate the concern. I appreciate your comment, transport. I appreciate all your support. Pluck says, if you were buying a truck, what engine would you prefer? Depends. It really depends on the application. If you're just getting into industry, uh, and, and if I'm just getting into industry and I want to save some money, uh, you know, more than likely DD15s are going to be the the most cost effective. I'm not saying you're not going to have any problems. You definitely can have problems. You definitely can have issues, but they're not as expensive as a Volvo part or as a uh, Cummins part or a or a Packard part or a Caterpillar part. They're going to be a little bit cheaper, and it's because they manufacture a ton of them. You know, that's why 60 Series was so popular. 60 Series was just, there was a lot of trucks 60 Series out there. So, basically, Detroit just replaced the 60 Series with the DD-15. So, there's a lot of DD-15s out there. There's a lot of DD-15s out there. That's what's mainly on the road right now. So, that's I would probably go with a DD-15. Uh, just And I would definitely look for maintenance history. I'll definitely check it out. I'll hook up the computer. I uh, would definitely just go through it with a fine comb before I buy it because it could cost a lot of money if we're if you don't take those thoroughly 
checks thoroughly. Uh, okay, Trucker has another comment. It says, an EPU runs off of battery. I have seen those EPUs. Um, they basically are batteries. They are just a generator, and they generate a AC uh, system that's under the under the bunk under the bunk. I might have misunderstood your question. I thought you were ba basically asking if you can ba make shift your own generator with with an AC system. I don't recommend that. But if it's the a if it's the EPU that has the actually generator and the AC system as one built together, then you can get those installed, and I would and you could definitely go that route. Manny says why there is knocking okay why is there why there is knocking voice in front suspension of a volvo three seven eight seven sixty if it has anything if, depending on your miles we have volvos coming in that have popping issues cascadia has come in with popping issues most of the time it's going to be that front spring uh that needs to be replaced uh, the bushings war and that front springs pop in when you're going into a bind and that spring finally kind of shifts a little bit and it's popping. Uh, I would definitely get it checked out before condemning a, 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 a spring, but uh, 760, depending on the mileage, more than likely it's going to be front end bushings and springs. So keep that in mind. Manny says, thanks for the information. You're welcome. Big Josh says, any good shops you recommend in Maryland? I don't know anybody in Maryland besides... Uh, I know a truck repair shop, but they do light duty. They don't do heavy duty. And those are the guys that got popped by by EPA, actually. So they're mostly performance. Uh, and the only reason why I really know them is because they reached out to me uh, on some questions that they had on a repair, which I was very surprised. Thank you. Uh, uh, Transport says probably steering box on that on that question you were asking about the front end popping, Manny. I would definitely get it checked out before condemning anything. I I'm, I am I am saying springs because I see it. But I would definitely, yeah, 700,000 miles, yeah. So if you have 700,000 miles, those are probably pretty a pretty rough 700,000 miles. So getting your suspension checked out. I'm not going to say it's going to be exactly what this is. It could be the spring. could be the steering box. Get it checked out. You're going to be able to see that rust bleeding. I mentioned that in one of my videos about DOT inspections. That's what I mean about rust bleeding. You're going to be able to see that rust move around, and it's going to break loose, and it's going to run down as if it's bleeding those are that's considered rust bleeding those are items that you're going to need to check out so keep that keep that um keep that in mind got another uh, another comment here hopefully your shop expands to houston thanks for the good info i'm a tech and every day i'm learning wish you the best i appreciate that yeah and i'm going to look you up send me your send me your contact information uh, once we actually decide to expand out to Houston, we're going to be looking for qualified tech. So I have my I have my email address there on the comment section, info at tatexpressinc.com. I'll be more than more than happy to give you a chance if it's something that you may be interested in and joining us. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, guys, that's it. We, I've caught up to all the comments. I appreciate all your support, guys. We're going to have some good content coming out this week. I got the wheel seal that everybody's been asking about. I'm going to try to shoot this uh, delete video before we leave here today, uh, we're, before we actually head out to the site so we can wrap up the uh, the construction video that's going to be coming out this week too, guys. So I really appreciate all the support, guys. If any of this information has helped you and you want to support the channel, you can either leave us Google review, not any lies, everything true, if it's something that I help you with, you can just leave me a review, Facebook review, Google review. Uh, check out our reviews. We've been getting some good reviews coming in from customers coming in from uh, all over. You know, we had a guy just came in from PA last week. Left us a, an excellent review. Martin from The View. He just Martin was watching us last week. Came in from El Paso because he couldn't find a good shop. We were able to get him hooked up. And you can you, the proof is in the in the review. You can see it in the review. If you can't do a review and you want to send us a tip, you can send us through Cash App, Money Sign T A T Express Inc. Uh, I'm sorry, Money Money Sign T A T Express, uh, and we'll be more than happy to uh, take that. Frankie got another comment here. Transport also give me a job. LOL. I'll move out to California. Move out to you from California. That sounds great, man. California, man. That's you probably save some money coming out here to Dallas. We, uh, we get a lot of people moving in from California. Frankie says, how can I get specs on parts catalog for a DD-13, DD-15 for free? Is there any input? I'll appreciate it. 
you know, I, I don't know where you're going to get be able to get accurate parts, you know, accurate parts information. Uh, you know, we pay for subscriptions so that we can get accurate breakdown of, of, of the parts. And that's a yearly subscription. So I don't have any word that you can probably get that for free. Guys, as I mentioned, I'm going to wrap it up. I've almost went two hours today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I had a great time today. Uh, appreciate all the comments. We're going to go live again next Sunday. If you got any questions or concerns during the week, hit us up. Or you can call me at 972-225-3017. You can email us at info at tatexpressinc.com. Again, thanks for joining us, guys. And until next time, we'll see you. Find me. Hope you find me.